This is Actar's Reviews, from anime to figures and beyond. Hey, this is Actar, and you're watching another episode of Actar's Figure Reviews. Railgun fans can finally complete the dynamic duel of To Aru Kagaku no Railgun as the arrow teleporter Kuroko finally arrives on the scene in Figma form to join her beloved Onesama. Undeniably one of the most perverted female characters in anime history, Figma Kuroko, just like all the other Railgun Figma figures before her, is an exclusive bundled together with the To Aru Kagaku no Railgun PSP game. Kuroko herself is unequivocally one of my favorite characters from the series due to her uniqueness, awesome power, and steadfast love for justice and Mikoto. Not to mention, I don't even think that Kuroko would have been even half as awesome without Arai Satomi doing a superb job in voicing Kuroko's wide range of emotions and exclamations. But I digress. Coming back to Figma Kuroko, I believe she would have been released much much earlier if she wasn't attached to the game. Originally planned for release in April, the game underwent numerous delays and it has finally been released just earlier this month, more than half a year later. So let's hope that the wait was worth our while as we get straight to the review. Being a PSP game exclusive figure, she does come in a unique box with specially drawn art on the front showing a scene with Kuroko up to her old tricks. On the sides, we have pictures of the actual Figma figure in various poses as well as the back with the usual clash of pictures featuring a figure in, well, various poses. However, a majority of the back is used to cover the game. And speaking of the game, bad news for those interested in it as I will not be touching upon it in this review at all. But from the looks of it, it appears to be a completely original story told visual novel style featuring the four main characters from the anime series. Uh, fully voiced, it also has 3D action battle scenes and original CG. While I will be trying the game out, um, putting the language barrier aside, I'm not that big of a fan of visual novels as I personally prefer games that are more uh, visually stimulating and interactive. Since I did pre-order the game way way back, it also comes with a special pre-order bonus that takes the form of a cleaning cloth featuring Mikoto and Kuroko. Well, doing what Kuroko does best. So without further ado, let's open this up and take a look at the contents inside. Figma Kuroko once again shares the same main body as Figma's Mikoto and Misaka Imoto. So there's really nothing of note to mention that I haven't already talked about in the respective reviews of those other two figures. But if you haven't seen those two videos, basically the sculpting and paint details are all nice and crisp, from the dynamic folds in her clothes that add to the sense of movement and realism, to the painted lines and logo on her vest. Speaking of her vest, it and her skirt are made of soft PVC that allow for sleek, smooth and undisrupted anime accurate aesthetics without sacrificing the articulation which we'll be getting into in just a second. What's new this time round is of course Kuroko's head, which like all the other Figma figures, bears an uncanny resemblance to the original animated counterpart. Do note the really nice individually sculpted hair strands. Another difference between her and Figma Mikoto is her socks. Uh, yeah, to reflect Kuroko's, well, uh, mature tastes, GSC has gone the extra mile to give Kuroko a very, very interesting colour of panties. We've had white, red, black, striped, pink, and now, purple. Honestly, GSC's attention to details with regards to the colour and variation of panties is, frankly, astonishing. So in terms of articulation, Figma Kuroko's head can move up and down, side to side, and side to side this way as well. Her hair strands are individually articulated on ball joints, so that you can pose them to match whatever situation or pose you have her in. Her arms are double ball jointed, once at the arm itself and once at the body itself, to offer that extra bit of more natural posability. The arms can move forwards and backwards, in and out. They can also rotate side to side at the upper arm. The elbows do bend and the wrists do move forwards and backwards and rotate all the way around. Figma Kuroko does have a very nice chest and waist joint system that allows her to move her upper body forwards and backwards, side to side and rotate side to side. 
Her legs can move forwards and backwards, in and out. They can also rotate at the upper thigh. Her knees do bend quite a fair bit. And her feet can move forwards and backwards, side to side, and swivel side to side this way. And now for the accessories. First, the Figma Basics. The three-jointed Figma Stand. Figma Base. And Figma Ziploc Bag that will come in very handy for tiny accessory storage. Besides the cheeky sideways glance that she already has on, Figma Kuroko comes packaged with two extra exchangeable faces. One of which is a battle-ready expression, and another, well, uh, let's just call it happy perverted expression. Exchangeable hands-wise, we have quite a few that range from normal splayed open hands to ones with minute holes in them, specifically for use with her needles, which we'll be getting into in just a second. For the character-specific accessories, we have a characteristic judgment armband. For this accessory, we are treated with two different variants. The one that you see on her now is sculpted specifically for this signature pose, with one side of it being pulled. The other, more neutral one is for use with all other poses. Once again, do note the minute details like the painted lines, logo and safety pin. To go about swapping or putting on her armbands, you need to pull her arm off the peg and simply slide the armband on, not unlike with Figma Nodoka. Being a teleporter, Kuroko isn't heavily armed. Instead, she uses needles, a very simple yet versatile weapon. By using her powers, she can either use the needles to restrain a foe by pinning him to the floor, or if the situation calls for it, teleport the needles within their bodies to incapacitate them. And the way they decided to go about handling the needles is nothing short of mind-blowing. Take a look at this. Nope, this is not chromed plastic, but actual, honest to goodness, solid metal. This is certainly unprecedented and you can color me impressed. All in all, we get 10 needles attached to this frame. All we have to do to get her to hold them is to simply break them off and insert them into the tiny holes on the two special exchangeable hands. Now this is really indicative of the thought that they put into this release. They could have just left it plastic, they could have made them just a sculpted and painted part of the exchangeable hands, but no! Not to mention, having them separate from the exchangeable hand means that you can not only use them as separate accessories, but you can also replace any one needle if it gets broken or misplaced, as it comes with four extras. Being made of metal, the needles are really less prone to breakage and it does really add a sense of prestige and I would say realism to the figure as these are practically miniature replicas. Moving on to ensure that she has her needles at all times while on patrol, Kuroko holds them in special straps which she wears on her legs. To recreate that, we are provided with a pair of exchangeable thigh pieces. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first times we've had one of these. Exchanging them requires popping the originals off their bow joints, popping the replacement ones on, and swapping the lower legs. Some might be hesitant to do this in fear of loosening the joints, and I can completely understand. While it doesn't seem to be an immediate issue as the joints are really firm, I wouldn't recommend swapping the legs out too many times. But still, it is simply brilliant that they decided to put in the extra effort to provide both normal legs and ones with her needles, so you can have her both on duty and off duty. If only they put this kind of effort into Home Rush Shield, but uh, let's not get into that. Next up, a really interesting accessory, a pair of handcuffs to complement her job working for Judgment. Now these are indeed awesome as you can cuff any other Figma figure as all of them have exchangeable hands. All you have to do is to position the arms, pop both hands off, align the handcuffs, and pop both hands back on. This is definitely all well and good and it serves the desired effect, but if your thought processes are like Kuroko's, you are even free to use them for other more deviant purposes. And if that wasn't enough, a special exchangeable hand with Kuroko holding the handcuffs is also included. Saving the most boring for last, included with Figma Kuroko is a regulation school bag sans the Gekuta strap that was hanging on Mikoto's. In conclusion, while Figma Kuroko appears to be very simple in terms of her design and accessories, she actually comes with a myriad of options and you can tell that great care and thought was put into her accessories to account for all the different poses and situations. 
The figure itself is accurate and poseable and the accessories pretty much provide her with all that you'll need to recreate any pose or scene from the anime. Not to mention, the metal needles are an exceedingly phenomenal touch. So, the Zacks are saying, see you guys in the next episode.